Oh, hey everyone, it's Susie Crypto Granny here. The date's 21st of November 2022 and it's 14.49 p.m. in Amsterdam. And just wanted to um, tell you guys, I did a video three days ago on Commonwealth Bank of Australia, the biggest major bank in Australia, one of the largest, well, it is the largest in Australia. They were actually using RippleNet and the ISO 2022 standards body, which is basically the distributed ledger uh, technology with, with the standards of the of the coin and everything else, right, for XRP. Mm. And what was interesting in this um, this article was basically also National Australia Bank is also adopting Ripple's uh, ISO 2022 standard and they're using it via RippleNet as well. And they also adopted RippleNet. And I didn't realise this back in uh, earlier in March of this year by the looks of it. Now, I know for a fact that Commonwealth Bank of Australia have been using RippleNet technology since 2014 and was doing an intra-company within the company and overseas uh, uh, subsidiaries and this sort of thing. But National Australia Bank coming in as well, that is absolutely huge. National Australia Bank, I think it's about the second largest bank in Australia. The Australian banks are extremely profitable and the major banks' credit ratings are anything from AA minus, Standard & Poor's, to AA, which means that their, you know, their credit rating is a very, very high investment credit rating and the fact that NAB is also using RippleNet's technology is just incredible and their ODL, their you know, their uh, on-demand liquidity and this sort of thing, right? And NAB is huge. So let me talk to you about who NAB is in Australia, if you're from America or Canada or somewhere else because you won't know them. But they are also, they used to own Clydesdale Bank in the UK as well, but they're really huge, right? So we talk about NAB, uh, you know, we're looking at Literally, they've been around like for a long, long time. Okay, they were founded in 1982. Uh, you know, from a commercial banking license, they're huge, right? Their revenue in 2020 and it's more this year was 17.261 bill. Net income again was 2.559 bill. Assets were 88866 bill. Uh, CBA was actually larger, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, but this, this is a huge bank, National Australia Bank. They had 35,000 employees. They're in New Zealand. They're all over the world, okay? And this is great that, you know, they're using RippleNet and Ripple and XRP with ODL as well. It's the largest of two largest banks in Australia, which are the most profitable banks in the world, the Australian banks are, are using RippleNet. And NAB, like Commonwealth Bank of Australia, does heaps of foreign exchange, heaps of derivatives, heaps of all sorts of products, fixed interest, over-the-counter derivatives, swaps, interest rates, you name it, and heaps of foreign currency. These guys, National Australia Bank, are also one of the largest foreign currency traders uh, in, in the market, but also the commercial businesses. NAB and CBA have a lot of commercial businesses, firms that use them, foreign currency and corporate treasuries. We have a lot of corporate treasuries in Australia, particularly in Victoria and Sydney, where NAB and Commonwealth Bank, uh, you know, originated from. So this is huge. Now, National Australia Bank, just to give you some background, took over a neo bank, and they took that over, and it's a directly, it's an online bank. It's an interbank bank, like a virtual digital bank, and it doesn't have retail branches, okay? Not at all. So they did this in, they took them over in 2016 and they incorporated those into wow. Ubank, which also carries National Australia's credit rating. Uh, and Ubank is also a digital uh, bank, if you want to call it that, okay, without retail banks. So this is really huge. I've got to tell you that. This is big for Ripple Net at XRP, just as big as CBA. It is huge. Ripple is thousands of dollars underrated. I've got to tell you that the XRP coin, okay? If we look at NAB's credit rating, it's very, very high by Standard & Poor's, AA minus, stable. Their short-term credit rating is the highest credit rating you can get, A1 plus, and so is the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. 
these two huge banks in Australia are both Ripple Nets and Ripple clients and they're using XRP. This is huge, guys, huge. I've got to tell you that. Absolutely huge. Wow. I mean, in my mind, XRP is underrated. Like the coin is so cheap, uh, you know, 30 something cents. It is a joke. Like I said to you, you know, I put out a valuation about four years ago at three, three, four or whatever it was or whatever it was, over 300 bucks. But with everything else that's gone on with RippleNet, my new valuation is well over $1,000 per coin. You know, so I'm a happy holder of XRP for five years, okay? At least five years, right? It is just a no-brainer. They've never had hacks. Ripple has no debt and over a billion dollars worth of money in the bank and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. To have the two largest banks in Australia, major banks, that are, you know, they make billions in profit every year, $10 billion in profit every year. It is huge for Ripple and XRP. Another story very quickly I want to tell you about is uh, Brad Garninghouse got a, a call from uh, Mr. Sam Banks-Fried, who basically is a liar. He's fraudulent. He's a scammer. You know, I said before in one of my videos, there should be a cryptocurrency oath. Like in uh, Holland, they have all the banks, everyone that works for big banks have to take a banker's oath. And that's about integrity and ethics. And we need something like that in the cryptocurrency market. A cryptocurrency oath to incorporate in, in you know, ethics. You know, are you an honest person? Integrity. You know, if you don't uh, sign that in, in uh, the Netherlands, working for the big banks, a banker's oath, you don't get a job. And that looks at the ethics of someone their integrity and their honesty. We know that Mr. Sam Bankman Fried had no accounting system, no nothing. Money was just like, you know, the, what came on the exchange was like a big piggy bank to the guy. He drew out $300 million and more money, a billion dollars for a personal loan from the Melbourne Research to buy his big swanky property in Bahamas. Who, who pays $42 million for a house? I mean, it reeks of egotism and selfishness and all sorts of things. So clearly this guy didn't have any integrity. And honestly, we need a cryptocurrency oath where we have to sign on the line, you know, and if you do the wrong thing, you, you should be going to jail. So it's just, just that simple. This guy should be going to jail, absolutely. Anyway, what um, happened is uh, Sam Bateman Fried called uh, Fred Garlinghouse just a couple of days before the FTX collapse. And, you know, he's, you know, obviously the story goes, Gullinghouse told the Sunday Times that SBF called him and asked him if he'd be interested in buying some of FTX's answers. Uh, Mr. Gullinghouse spoke about if he needs liquidity, maybe there are businesses he bought or he doesn't want to, doesn't want to own, maybe we'll have a look at it, put it on the table and that sort of thing. So Mr. Gullinghouse said that it would be a harder path to buy FTX's assets now due to defunct cryptocurrency filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. But it's not to say that he wouldn't look at their assets. Uh, if you go to this story here, for example, you know, Mr. Garlinghouse said, we'll look at the carcass of FTX and see if we can buy any of the interesting parts of the businesses, particularly where it serves customers, okay, uh, and their stakes in other types of companies. It's just, if it's to do with customers, maybe cryptocurrency, Clients, they may look at it. Now, FTX, as it says here, is affiliated with a lot of other companies. So I think Ripple also, don't forget, they got a banking license in Ireland. And I said that years ago they would do that, four or five years ago. If you look at my last lot of videos years ago. But also I said Ripple could become anything. And I also said a cryptocurrency exchange. Now I expect Ripple could become a cryptocurrency exchange as well. And certainly if they bought the assets of FTX in terms of the client base, the client base is huge. It's about, what, 10 billion or something. So you can imagine if Ripple bought the client base of FTX, they could become an exchange, a cryptocurrency exchange, as well as a bank, where they could get credit ratings with Standard & Poor's, just like the major banks in Australia that have credit ratings. If you have a credit rating, you know your cost of funding is going to be a lot lower. And if you have a high credit rating, 
like a double A minus or A1 plus for short term, then your cost of funding is going to be very, very cheap. And also with a credit rating, it gives clients, uh, you know, uh, knowledge that Stan Poor is one of the biggest credit rating agencies in the world in America, which it is, uh, has looked over the balance sheet and the cash flows of a company that they've given a credit rating to, and they keep an eye on them. Uh, notwithstanding, their credit ratings aren't always right because, you know, the, the uh, credit uh, standard pours and Moody's are often very much behind looking at the balance sheets of every company. Uh, they only look at it once a year and they should do it a lot more frequently than that. But if Ripple also got a credit rating uh, to operate as, you know, um, as uh, a bank where they can actually take money from clients and that becomes their li liability, a credit rating gives you, gives Ripple much more credibility, okay? Because Standard & Poor's is a very well-known uh, credit rating agency for bonds, you know, for all sorts of things. You know, if you want to issue bonds into the capital markets, which I'm so, sure Ripple could do that later as well, as well as do an IPO for their own equity. So there's so many ways that Ripple can get money and it's not funny to expand their balance sheet and to buy other assets, particularly uh, cryptocurrency clients and more, okay? It's huge, right? So another story here um, that, you know, obviously, you know, of course he, he spoke to them and, uh, you know, some of the assets this, uh, they've got, you know, don't forget uh, FTX, FTX bought uh, Ledger Inc. They bought a few other shops as well. And, you know, there might be something there. They bought liquid uh, liquid asset exchange in uh, in um, Japan and they've got licenses and all sorts of things. So I think this is a really, really good story. Um, and, you know, honestly, these guys, Ripple could do anything. They're huge. They're, they're just getting better and better and better. And, uh, you know, I think XRP is just too cheap. Um, Mr. Brad Gallinghouse also went on to say that, you know, he's optimistic that after the FTX uh, fiasco, you know, transparency and trust will be the focus. And he's absolutely spot on. Um, you know, yes, I looked at FTX and I really liked it. And, you know, we only put in a very small percentage of our portfolio, maybe less than 5%. Um, I lost $4,000 and it's the first time I've lost money picking the wrong coin and all the history that I've been, you know, investing in, in cryptocurrency. And the one thing that, I really, you know, really needed to really focus on was, you know, the fact that I thought the guy was ethical. I thought the guy came from a great family, two professors at Stanford. You know, he was seen to be an educated, real educated genius nerd. But, you know, again, how do you, you know, you need to be able to investigate, obviously very clear the management, but he, he you, know, you know, had everyone sucked in. I mean, even Thomas Tomasek, which is the largest, uh, you know, uh, government fund in Singapore. They did eight months of due diligence on FTX, seeing Sam Bankman Freed or his name is constantly and all the people there. Uh, I guess the thing is for me, learning from this, you know, maybe we need an indicator uh, for the fact that, you know, these people were under 30, they were less experienced. You know, clearly uh, it's very hard to to get that information about how ethical someone is or whether they're going to do fraud, right? It's very hard to hedge against that, extremely hard. And they certainly, you know, affected a lot of people in the market, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of corporations and people. And, you know, even the billionaires got caught. So they really, you know, conned everyone. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, you know, I think it's really worthy this. And, uh, you know, I think it's just great for uh, the Ripple overall and XRP. Thanks very much for listening to me and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.